Aromatic compounds are absolutely everywhere. I'm going to give you a tour of the variety of aromatic compounds, and I think you'll be impressed by how many places these guys pop up. But before I do that, let me tell you just a couple of things. Number one, this name is misleading. In the very early days of organic chemistry, the compounds that fall into this group had distinctive aromas, and they were called aromatic compounds for that reason. But we've gone way beyond that now, and many, many compounds that fit our current definition of aromatic have no aroma at all. So what are the characteristics that make a compound aromatic? Well, we'll discuss this in detail in another lecture, but I can tell you right now that there are two things that are important. One is that the compound have a ring, and the second is that there be something special about the pi system in that ring, the number of electrons and the ring itself. The very simplest example is a compound called benzene. I've written two structures. They're resonance structures. Neither one is equally valid. Neither one is right. This compound does not have alternating single and double bonds, but rather some hybrid between the two. When we choose to write the alternating single and double bonds, we can choose to write either one of these resonance structures Almost always when I write aromatic compounds, I'm going to put a circle in that ring to remind us that, in fact, we don't have alternating single and double bonds, but we have a ring that's aromatic. Here's a second example. Toluene is benzene that has a methyl group stuck on it. Both benzene and toluene are very good solvents. Both benzene and toluene are good additives to gasoline. They burn well. But because benzene is carcinogenic, it's no longer used in gasoline, and toluene isn't used as much either. There's a related aromatic compound, three of them actually, called xylene. Here's a benzene ring that has two methyl groups stuck on it, and there are three different ways those methyl groups could be stuck on, so that we have three isomers. Xylenes also, like toluene and benzene, are good solvents and burn well, and can be used as a gasoline additive, as well as other things. All of these guys are made from petroleum oil, as is naphthalene. Here's an interesting structure. It's got two six-membered rings that are aromatic, and they share a side, sort of like Siamese twins. It's used as mothballs. Or you could be buying mothballs that are paradichlorobenzene. Like the xylenes, it has two things stuck on a benzene ring. They have this specific orientation. You probably know what these compounds smell like, because you probably know what mothballs smell like. And speaking of things you can buy at the store, vanilla flavoring is used very widely. It's an aromatic compound. You see it has three different things stuck on it. If it only has one, the aldehyde group stuck on it, it's a compound called benzaldehyde, and that's imitation almond flavor. Very simple compound, widely used flavor. Many pharmaceutical drugs contain aromatic rings, including one of the very earliest ones, aspirin. Aspirin has two functional groups stuck on it in this particular orientation. It's a compound called acetyl salicylic acid. And speaking of drugs, pseudoephedrine is an aromatic compound. This is a decongestant which is highly effective, but unfortunately it is widely sought after because it's a precursor to meth. Many, many pharmacologically active agents have aromatic rings and nitrogen, such as the amino group you see here. Here's another rather simple aromatic compound that's used widely in industry called styrene. It's used to make styrofoam and other synthetic compounds we call polymers that are composed of long chains. Terephthalic acid is a benzene ring with two carboxylic acid groups attached to it, and along with bisphenol A, is a compound that's used to make many synthetic materials that are made up of very long chains. Styrene, terephthalic acid, bisphenol A, all ultimately are derived from petroleum. The polymers made from bisphenol A, called BPA, are controversial because they tend to contain trace amounts of BPA left over from the synthesis. And this is a compound that has synthetic estrogen activity. So there are significant concerns about this compound activating estrogen receptors. Not all aromatic compounds are carbon rings. Here's a compound that's very common, widely used in research labs and industry as a base catalyst, a compound called pyridine. This has a nitrogen in place of one of the CH units. And just about the time that you're deciding that all of these aromatic compounds have six-membered rings, well, not so fast. Take a look at Carole. 
This compound occurs widely, is used in research labs and in industry, and has biological importance. It's a five-membered ring that's aromatic. It has a nitrogen plus four carbons in the ring. And the oxygen analog of this is widely known as well, a compound called furan. You can even have two nitrogens in the ring. Imidazole has nitrogens in the positions I've shown here. It's a very important biological catalyst as a structural component of enzymes. One last structure I want to show you is Kevlar. This is a long chain polymer, lots of aromatic rings hooked together with other functional groups. Kevlar is stronger than steel. It's used to make bulletproof vests that are light enough to wear comfortably, widely used on the battlefield. It's used to make protective helmets like motorcycle helmets. And it's used to make cables that are much stronger than steel cables. Remarkable. Looking at this structure might be enough to make you go cross-eyed but when you break it down into its components, it's not so complicated. This is a long chain that is made up of alternating aromatic units. The yellow aromatic rings have nitrogens attached. The green aromatic rings have carbonyls attached. And the very long chains, thousands of units long, have these alternating yellow and green components. Well, there you have it. I hope I've left you with the impression that aromatic rings are all over the place, synthetic materials, biological materials, drugs, flavoring agents. Clearly it's worth some time studying their properties, the reasons for their stability, and the chemistry that's also dictated by the special stability of the aromatic ring.